We got to talk jazz basketball because the best team in the NBA is in the hizzy tonight. The Phoenix Suns in town to take on your Utah Jazz. And I think one of the big storylines going into this game tonight are the comments of Rudy Gobert on ESPN yesterday. And before I play this soundbite, I just want to ask why. Why is this necessary? Why on on any thought process or when this interview request came in, why did the Utah Jazz grant permission for Rudy Gobert to go on ESPN? Because this has been one of the biggest problems that we've talked about with Rudy is his inability to say the right thing to the media. And whether he means it or his intentions are good and well, like it just doesn't matter. Rudy Gobert yesterday goes on, what was it, NBA Today or The Jump? Yeah, NBA Today. He goes on NBA Today on ESPN and plays the victim card for the Utah Jazz. There's, there's always going to be noise. Mm. You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of teams and a lot of people that would love for us to, 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 to break apart. They would love to get a Rudy Gobert or Donovan Mitchell in their team. And uh, there's a lot of bigger market, too, that would love to, to get that. And uh, we, we're aware of that. And, and we know that everything that happens within our team on the court, of the floor of the court is going to be, is being looked at with a, with a very, with a big scope. And, and people are looking for anything they can find to just try to divide us. And then, uh, you know, for us, after we, what we've been through over the last few years and the COVID situation and everything, you know, we, we both aware of that. And, and we both, you know, uh, we both know that it's something that's not going to stop. And uh, we got to mute that noise. And uh, we both have the same goal. is to win a championship here. And um, and we're going to embrace the moment. Uh, Rudy Gobert yesterday on the NBA Today on ESPN. I, I don't understand this. I don't know the, the thought process that went into um, granting this interview. You knew that anybody that was going to interview Rudy or Don one-on-one -on -one was going to ask about their relationship. And then to go into this tangent and go on this run about how everybody around the league and the media and the fans and our cousin's brother's mechanic wants to break up the jazz and mm -hmm. get, you know, uh, major market teams want Rudy and Donovan. And like, why are we talking about this publicly? And the thing I, I don't like about this is, again, you're in the middle of one of the most tumultuous seasons that this team is this current incarnation of the jazz has had. It's been a very difficult season by any measure, right? So why throw gas on the fire and blame everybody else for everything that's going on when you just, to me, need to move on and stop talking? Stop talking about this. Don't do these interviews. And maybe, Jake, I'm just completely wrong about this, but I hate that he even sat down to do this interview. Yeah, I, I just think it's unnecessary. I, I think that, you know, again, remember where this all started. I mean, this is all stemming from a stat that essentially says that Donovan Mitchell passes to the other team more than he passes to Rudy Gobert, meaning he turns the ball over three times a game and he passes to Rudy two times a game. So, you know, I, I think it's it, the, the depending on who you ask, you'll get a different answer on this. But I think, in my opinion, it's unnecessary to be talking to the media to the media in this fashion. It's unnecessary to be doing ESPN interviews after there's a stat going around. I mean, again, let's not forget just the other day, we had Quinn Snyder at the table, you know, dismissing all of this. So, so let me get this right. You have your head coach who said something. ESPN now has had Rudy Gobert say something. When is Don, when's the Don interview coming? Right? I mean, honestly, if we go off of what we've seen, would anybody be surprised if Donovan Mitchell gave an interview and said, hey, there's Not nothing really. here? Right? So to me, I'm just like, hey, you know, like we're so focused on the media and not focused on basketball. Like let's focus on what we can control. And to me, I just think that 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 it is – I. A waste of time is probably harsh, you know, it probably is a step too far, but that's kind of what it felt like to me when I saw this interview come out and I had like five people send it to me on Twitter. I'm like, dude, wh why, why go on ESPN and do this? So then now you're starting to look at the standings. You're like, Hey, the nuggets are a half game back. 
Anybody know? Anybody seen that? Anybody paying attention to that? Anybody care about that? No, we're just going to go on ESPN and do some interviews. So, I don't know, man. Like, and this isn't just a Rudy thing. I want to be really clear because I I, I'm really not wanting to see comments about, oh, well, you guys just hate Rudy or you're blaming Rudy. This isn't Rudy's fault. Yeah, you're right. This is the organization's fault too because this request comes through the organization. The organization has to approve that. So the organization's good with it. Rudy's good with it. Rudy's agent is good with it. Quinn Snyder's clearly good with it. So this is an organization thing, and I just I, I just don't understand the mindset. Yeah, I think, again, we talk about distractions and we talk about all this stuff. Let Quinn Snyder do the talking here. You're going to you're gonna get a free pass from the media in Salt Lake City. We've talked about this. Yeah. Nobody is going to press these two guys on their relationship. Um, they, nine nights out of ten, don't even have to talk to the media. Yeah. I don't understand the upside here. And, and I actually think this is a significant conversation. This is a really big issue because – what Donovan Mitchell, Quinn Snyder, Rudy Gobert, all these guys talking about this, what these guys are doing by by saying things like, you know, hey, the world wants to break us apart. Like, it, what are you talking you're, you're about? giving credence to what everybody's talking about. And you're going so far out of your way to talk about how your relationship's great. It's pretty clear it's not. What the fuck are you yeah, talking about? Like it's just it's That's I, a great I don't, point. I don't understand it. They're so far over the top. And by the way, this is not new. We've been talking about this, the the heat between Rudy Gobert and his teammates since December. Yeah. And so this is not new. Um, I think we've done a pretty good job of being accurate with our sourcing on this show. We've led the news cycle. Um, and it's not a secret that Rudy Gobert is not loved by his teammates. So why are we continuing to talk about it? Yeah. Like just play the play out the string, do what you can do this season, win every game that you can win, and then see what happens in the summer. Yeah. But you got to stop with this drama stuff. You got to stop with, with. It, it. Why are you talking about rumors? Like everybody keeps talking about how oh these are rumors. It's garbage. You made it up. There's no. That. Okay, then why are you talking about it? If it's completely not true, there's no foundation to it. There's no truth to it. It's absolutely false. Why are we talking about this for going on three months now? Yeah. Why is it a continuing topic of conversation? And my guess is they're talking about it because it's true. Yeah. And they're tired of hearing about it. And we've repeatedly told you that that the Jazz are unhappy that it's being reported. The Jazz don't like... Anything that the Jazz cannot control as far as media rumors and news really upsets them. It's, it, they are very sensitive to what is reported, especially locally, about the club. And when you see this stuff, if it was meaningless and it, there, there was no heat behind it, why did we have a players-only meeting this week? Yeah. If it was meaningless and nobody had any problems, why are we closing doors and not talking to the media? Yeah. Why are we? Why do we have jazz players refusing to talk to the media? This week? Why are Why are you refusing to talk to the media? Why? Well, it's because you you don't. One answer would be, well, the media is just a bunch of assholes who you know they they ask these questions and they're ridiculous, made up rumors from yeah. sources. Okay, then why are you doing sit down interviews with ESPN addressing them directly? Why is Quinn Snyder giving an impassioned speech the other night? about how these two guys like each other and they sit down and eat at the same table. What, what are we doing? Like, this is what I don't understand yeah, and I about think, this team. I think the media, there's this, there's this line that the media walks where, you know, like in Salt Lake City, we've talked about how the media is pretty soft and they're not going to ask accountable accountability type questions. Nationally, however, there will be those questions asked. And I think that, number one, ESPN is really good at ESPNing, meaning that that they understand that there's drama here and they need to get him on TV, right? So kudos to ESPN for asking, number one. Number two, I think that, that the organization as a whole is not used to having issues like this. They're not used to this type of uh, narrative or situation. And, and their true colors are kind of flying a little bit, meaning that, that you don't really know how to handle this situation the right way. Because to me, 
the the way to handle it the right way would have been to have Quinn talk about it just like they did, and that was it. This would have been dead to me if I was in the organization after that. I wouldn't even acknowledge the existence of this conversation unless I'm Quinn Snyder. So to me, I just think it's another one of those distractions. Again, in this soundbite, we're, Rudy is still talking about touching all those microphones in the COVID situation. Still talking like, about COVID. Like, that was... It's crazy. That was... Have we passed the three-year mark of that yet? I don't know no. the exact date that happened. But two, two full years ago now. Two full years? I think years, we're at two it? years, yeah. So even if it's two full years, it's still being talked about. And so that's why I say I think you it's make amazing. a great point. Like, like, if there's no heat here, if there's no smoke, if there's no issues and everything's hunky-dory, why is it still being talked about? Yeah. Because there yeah. is issues. And, and again, I want to make this really clear. We're not talking about issues just because it's enjoyable to talk about issues. Do you know how enjoyable it would be to, to wake up at 4.30? Oh, I mean 5.20 like I did today, right? Do you know how enjoyable it would be to wake up late and be able to come onto the show and just be able to say, yeah, man, they're five games clear of the play-in. They're, they're cruising into the postseason. Even if they lose tonight to the Suns, they're going to be fine. a big game with the Suns. Like, it would be so nice to just talk yeah, basketball. Yeah, we should be going to this game tonight, but Jake is yeah. going to make babies down in Zion. Like, that motherfucker yeah, don't I miss, mean, you man. know, Yeah, like, you I know, mean, like, these that are would the be things so we, nice. Ball-breaking Jake is far more entertaining than talking about yeah. Rudy Gobert and jazz drama. Fucking A. Yeah. But, I, I mean, the point is... I think I think when you address stuff like this, I, I I've seen this a thousand times. What do you think this is closest to? If you had to, if you had to, if you because I know we always compare this situation to like the Kobe and Shaq thing, but that felt like it was a little more serious than this is. Like, is there one that you would compare it to and be like, yeah, this is pretty close to that? It feels a lot like that because in the early days of Kobe versus Shaq, it was all t- plausible deniability. Plausible deniability. Oh, this is just total garbage. No, this is the this is Kobe used to say all the time. This is just you guys looking for something to talk about. This is you know there, it, and it was always because what teams do when they're in trouble, they blame the media. Yeah, that's what teams do when there are when there are issues being reported. And again, I I would simply say that when we reported last week, I guess it was that. There was there was a burnout factor. Yeah, that jazz that the jazz organization and his teammates were were worn out by Rudy Gobert. Mm-hmm. Like there was fatigue. I think is the word that was used related to Rudy Gobert. I must have gotten I don't know at least two or three phone calls about that from from the jazz saying, "Hey, wh- wh- where are you hearing this from? Why are you wh- like? Come on, you got are you going to ask about this and?" It's like, well, yeah, I talked to somebody in the organization already. I don't have to call you and ask your permission. Yep. And they were upset about that. And I think that, again, with all due respect to the Jazz, because I know they watch this show, and I respect the hell out of those guys. I do. But with all due respect to them, good media is not accountable to the organization. No, not at all. You're not. I, I, I think this this idea that that – the the internal body that is the jazz organization can just control the narrative in the media. It's crazy to me. But I understand why the team doesn't like the local media. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I think with the 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 massive mistakes that Andy Larson makes on a regular basis, the I mean, just the inaccuracy of his reporting. I understand why you would be why the Jazz like Donovan Mitchell calls him out directly but on like, Twitter. That's different than 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 asking tough questions and being very black and white with reporting yes. and being very just blunt and honest and like, Hey, this is what we see. This is what we're going to report. Like, yeah, like that's what it should be. And and I don't think that, I don't think a lot of organizations like it, to be honest with you. I just think that there's, there's more organizations in the league that are conditioned but to, to be it. true, to be, to be completely accurate about how things work. And in, in, in my experience, Anybody that reports daily on a on a on a professional or college sports team has this kind of interaction with the media. It's usually never talked about. It's behind the scenes. It's a personal relationship. Every beat reporter should be able to text the head coach, should be able to text the star player and say, "Hey man, this is what I'm hearing. This is what I'm seeing." You should be able to walk up to Donovan Mitchell and say, "Hey, you know, I saw that you you were having an interaction with the the Mavericks bench." What was going on there? 
But Andy decided not to do that, and it caused a lot of frustration. I get that, and it's not the first time, right? And so you, but the thing that you don't, the things you don't see are that there's a lot more of that behind the scenes. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Any organization, BYU, Utah, the Jazz, you name it, should try to control the narrative in the media. That is good PR. That's what they should be doing. The problem is the Jazz try to do that by by not talking to the media. COVID has allowed teams to go weeks without talking to the media. Yeah. And, I mean, I understand why they do it. But that's why you see so much sourcing happening around the Utah Jazz because they don't give access to the media. And the media that does cover the team on a regular basis doesn't have the fortitude or the wherewithal. Frankly, they don't have the balls to report things that are going on with the Jazz. They want to talk about, you know, they want to – everybody in Salt Lake City loves to talk about stats. Read the papers in New York, Chicago, Los Angeles – Read the papers in major markets. They're not talking about stats. The stats don't tell the story. They're talking about the inner workings of the organization. They're talking about, like, this situation with Michael Jordan and Russell Westbrook. This situation, if you're a baseball fan, Robert uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. calling out Freddie Freeman yesterday, saying that he was a bad teammate who had constant run-ins with, with, the, the, with other guys in the, the clubhouse, like, that's what the media does in most cities. They talk about the biggest issues around the team. And in Utah, we we wind up getting stats and we make shit up about what the player and the, the team's opposing bench is talking about. Yeah, and the most criticism an organization is going to get is not beating Idaho State by 50, you know? It's like, crazy to me that 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 the, the free pass that's given. And so the point is the Jazz boomerang – in the complete opposite direction when the truth starts leaking out. Yeah. And the truth leaks out because people get frustrated. And that's what you're seeing with this. And so you have Quinn Snyder, you have, you know, like Donovan Mitchell to a far less extent. Note when Don has done podcasts lately or did the Chris Haynes interview, it wasn't some like bombshell, hey, everybody's trying to destroy us mantra. Yeah. And that's the issue with this Rudy Gobert quote from ESPN. Yeah. Like, he literally went on ESPN yesterday, and we should play it again, but he goes on ESPN yesterday, and listen to this. He says, oh, people in the league, the, the media, COVID, they're trying, to, they're trying to break us apart. There's, there's always going to be noise. Mm. You know, there's... Right there. Right, I, just, I, I know we're going to play the whole thing, but right there. That's how he starts the interview. Again. There's, there's always going to be noise. Mm. You know, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of teams and a lot of people that, would love for us to, to 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 break apart. They would love to get a Rudy Gobert or Donovan Mitchell in, in their team, and uh, there's a lot of bigger market too that would love to to get that. And uh, we we're aware of that, and and we know that everything that happens within our team on the court, of the floor of the court, is going to be is being looked at with a with a very with a big scope, and, and people are looking for anything they can find to just try to divide us, and then. Uh, and I mean that's it. That's the essence of it. Everything that happens on the court with the team is under a big microscope. Please. It's not. And people are always looking for ways to divide us. They're not. I got news for Rudy Gobert. Just makes and me I got crazy, news. And, and and this is gonna this is probably gonna frustrate some people. But I want people to understand nationally what other media perceives the Jazz to be, which is a smaller market team that has two guys on it that can't figure it out. Like, I want to make sure we're all on the same page about what the rest of the league and the media thinks, because that's what they think. Hey, this is this is a good team, you know, the number one offense in the league, because everyone loves to say that, even though it doesn't mean a damn thing when it matters most. But, hey, this is the number one offense in the league, and, and these there's two guys on this team that just can't quite figure it out. And I think if you if you pay attention to what the national media says about this team, you can very clearly see they don't follow the Jazz closely. Yeah. Because they're not a championship contender. Um, And I think that's overwhelmingly, that's what you see. You know, I did a radio interview in um, Cleveland the other day, talking NBA. And, like, it's amazing how many people don't realize that this Jazz team struggles defensively. Like, the, the, in this particular person I was on the radio with in Cleveland, who I'm not going to name by name, was like, well, they're one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. 
and you have Rudy Gobert, the defensive player of the year, and and it's like, man. Like I just think most people don't pay attention to the 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 Jazz. There's a reputation out there that this is an elite basketball team. What happens is national media, like dudes in Cleveland or LA or wherever, they look at the stats. Number one offense in the league, great defensive team, Rudy Gobert. How are they not a title contender? But what you don't talk about is their lack of athleticism. What you don't talk about is their lack of chemistry. Their what, inability to, per, to, to, to play defense against the pick and roll. Their inability to stop people from getting in the paint. So then you point that out. And, anyway, it's, it, it, my point is I just don't think nationally people pay attention to it. And I think what they pay attention to is Donovan Mitchell wants to go play for the Knicks and he's got all kinds of friends and family in New York and who work for the Knicks and his former agent. And that's the narrative that, that you hear most. I just don't think people pay that close of attention. So when Rudy Gobert goes on ESPN, the, you know, the NBA today and says stuff like this, it creates a major problem. Yeah. And that's why I say, I don't understand why the Utah Jazz allowed Rudy to do this interview. Yeah. Because that interview goes through the Jazz. Rudy Gobert's not going on ESPN without the team not knowing. He would he would not he is not that's just not the way it works. Yeah. Um and I see one of the comments saying that maybe Rudy did this on his own. He did not. I guarantee you, I know for a fact it goes through the Jazz. It has to. They ESPN, have immediate contact. Yeah, ESPN calls the Jazz, says, Hey, we'd like to talk to Rudy Gobert on the NBA today. Um, you know, and they facilitate it. The Jazz make it happen. So they knew, and it's just, it's mind-boggling that you would allow him to go and do that. Yeah. That's just, to me, it's a mistake. Giggity says, morning, fellas, sweet Jeep. Yeah, we'll talk a lot about the Jeep we bought last night. Calvin Howard says, these guys are so lame. Well, thanks for being here, Calvin. Uh, Edgar Garcia says, morning, players, let's go Dodgers. Uh, the Utah Jazz will never lose another game in the rest of their existence, Kenny says. <laughs> I agree. Let's go SF Giants. So stoked for baseball. Me too. Oh, yeah. Cubs are undefeated. Yeah. Nico Horner's going to win the home run championship. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Edgar says, Calvin, you're a troll. Get out of here, chump bucket. Hey, man. This isn't the first it's time. Fine. Listen, Calvin. No, seriously. Calvin, this isn't the first time. We have guys all the time that come in here and say, hey, these guys are casuals. Or No, I no. Mean, they don't watch jazz basketball. Yeah, do you guys even watch jazz basketball? And then no. they listen for like, you know, a couple weeks, and all of a sudden we're getting things right, and we have good sourcing, and, you know, it'll play we, itself out. We only watch Selling Sunset, and we... You're uh, casual. We, yeah, we sit around and we play Fortnite. Yeah. So we don't have time for basketball. Well, don't but don't forget the Mountain Dew, because that's the most important part of playing Fortnite. And double stuffed Oreos. Yeah. Uh, Blind Swordsman, good morning to you. He says, Freaking Rudy needs to stop talking. Donovan talks, but doesn't say dumb stuff. By the way, go Cubbies. They're still overpaid, and I still love the Cubs, though. Thank you. Uh, morning, fellas. Jazz should just keep the locker room problems in the locker room. It's you keep don't, it real. You shouldn't be talking about it. Yeah. You should have meetings. You should talk amongst yourselves. You should have open, honest dialogue about issues on the on the on the team. You should not be talking to the media about it. 